transit trips in America are made on buses. If you go outside of New York, that share generally gets even higher. But over the past several years, nearly every major U.S. city has witnessed dramatic declines in bus ridership. Some blame may go to low gas prices and new services like Uber. But advocacy groups are making the argument that bus service is declining because of long-standing policy neglect and that something can and ought to be done about it. They're pushing their elected officials and transit agencies to apply changes like alder boarding, bus lanes, and transit signal priority. These kind of policy changes require political attention and will, which will only be obtained through a groundswell of public support. To give voice to bus riders, a new generation of bus campaigners are now canvassing buses, bus stops, and transit hubs to hear from and organize riders. Thanks to these new advocacy campaigns, we think we'll see buses in America turning around. Right now in New York, we know the subways are in a real moment of crisis, and the fact that buses are a real part of the conversation for our elected officials at the very top levels shows that we've really been able to make the bus a part of the story and focus people on the need to fix it. The reality is that we are not going to see heavy rail projects going down in the next year or five years or 10 years in the city of Boston. So we need to do what we can now to move more people more efficiently and the solution for that is buses. And the bus has been around forever, right? Um, and in a lot of cases, these, these routes have, have been very similar forever. So people don't view it as something that's dynamic and exciting and changing. We need to make sure that we've got bus lanes all over New York City. We need to make sure that we're doing things like all-door boarding on all of our buses. We need to make sure we're doing things like transit signal priority, holding the green light just a little bit longer so buses can cross through that intersection instead of getting caught at the red. You know, these are sort of things that are being done in cities all over the world. We're really behind the eight ball here in New York and we need to catch up. Being able to get on and off a bus and depending on that mode of transportation can mean the difference between keeping a job and losing a job. At a certain point, especially in the city of Boston, we've reached our limits of growth in terms of having more cars and what we really need to be looking at is alternatives like the bus. And we know for a fact that if we were to have more buses and have more reliable buses, we'd be able to serve even more people. When I'm at a bus stop or something and people are commenting on on how long it takes for the bus to get here or why is the bus not coming. I'll ask them, are you letting the T know? Are you going online? Are you using social media to let somebody know that you're dissatisfied with that? Because I feel that if we don't speak up, they're not aware of the fact that people are dissatisfied with the service. We've gone directly to transit stops like this with surveys about the quality of the bus service and just talked directly with riders. Um, and we found they're generally pretty open and excited about having a conversation about how the bus is or isn't working for them and how it could be better. Uh, we take lots of time to build relationships and that is with our riders, right, those who are affected. We need to get to know who they are, why they're invested in this and why they should be invested in the movement. 30 days ago, Governor Cuomo said that the subway was in a state of emergency. We want to ask them, what about buses? You know, we have people who come into organization that organizers and canvassers meet, and they're our base. And then we develop leaders. You know, they come to trainings, they give us ideas, we have strategy sessions together. To get the chance to, to be a change agent, I mean, that's really good. It's good to be with like-minded individuals trying to better our city. That's what it feels like. City of Boston, we're embarking on a partnership with MassDOT, the MBTA, and Boston BRT to show folks for a couple of weeks what it's like to get on all doors of the bus. So here behind me we have everyone boarding for the SL5 on the Silver Line. Everyone's kind of crowded up at the front of the bus because um, everyone has to pay individually right now. Starting tomorrow we're going to have a two-week demonstration of uh, the Silver Line Better Bus Experience. So what people are experiencing right now is actually being able to get on the bus with all doors opening at the same time. And one of the things that we're doing the, this, the, in this experiment is actually not collecting fares so that we can record all of the time savings that is happening because of all boards. Increasingly slow and unreliable buses are costing bus riders time and opportunities. New Yorkers are spending money on taxis when the bus doesn't arrive, 
and they're feeling anxiety. The bus turnaround campaign, which is an effort to completely revamp the way that buses work in New York City. We know riders aren't using the bus, they're abandoning the bus, and uh, you know we think there are some practical solutions. Bus riders know better than anyone from daily experience that New York City's buses are slow and unreliable. We're here today to release new interactive district-level fact sheets, which will allow bus riders to see the quality of service in their own neighborhoods. I think the turnaround campaign has been most successful in getting elected officials and the media to actually start paying attention to buses again. We're piloting prepaid boarding. This is at the Belmont Blue Line station on the Belmont bus route. And we're doing this to try to speed up our buses and improve the reliability. So customers here have paid at the payment location here and, and then they're waiting for the bus they've already paid and they get on the bus without paying and it speeds up the boarding process. When there's projects like this, uh, the prepaid boarding pilot, uh, people can see that with a little bit of investment and attention that the bus service can improve and it can be faster and more reliable. That helps us organize riders and get people excited and interested in improving the bus network. I think that having an advocacy organization draw attention to it creates an interest in it at the public level that the agency you can't necessarily build in the same way. And without the public asking for these things, um, without that demand coming from really the grassroots, I don't think that some of these things will be able to move forward as effectively.